My co-author, Mike Pachepa, lived in a communist system. He saw what happened with a government that was dishonest with its people, that misled the people, that misled other nations by putting out false information, disinformation. Mike Pachepa grew up wanting to be an American. He's a good student. He gets recruited into Soviet bloc intelligence. And he's always worried about what's going to happen. He's going to have to kill people, what he's going to do. He did some real bad things, some things that misguided America, that pointed America in the wrong direction. It's a front row seat into the psychological warfare of the Soviet empire. A close-up look at how misleading information can topple regimes and even change history. And it's a glimpse into the mind of former KGB agent Vladimir Putin. Professor Ronald Richlack is the co-author of a book called Disinformation. He wrote it with Lieutenant General Ion Mike Pachepa, the highest ranking Soviet intelligence officer ever to defect to the West. Professor Richlack joins us with more from Memphis, Tennessee. Welcome to the program. Professor, what is disinformation? Thanks very much. And how is it different from misinformation and regular information? Well, that, that's a great question, and it's one that... Clearly, if you have spent any time with my co-author, Mike Pachepa, you're going to hear about it. Misinformation, if you think about it, if you read a false story, if something comes from the Democrats about the Republicans, if something comes from Moscow about the United States, we know to doubt that. You, you, you take it with a grain of salt. When a piece of false information comes from a trusted source, when it comes uh, from... A, a, an important newspaper, a national newspaper that everyone believes in. When it comes from your own government, you tend to think that's reliable, but if it's disinformation, it's been planted there by a, a whatever entity wants to set out this false information. Now, obviously, this was a favorite tactic of the Soviets and the KGB and their foreign uh, service, their, their spies. Uh, they're diplomats, and we know that after the Berlin Wall came down, we found evidence, uh, reams of it, that the Soviet Union would fund activists in the West, peace activists, Marxist activists. Has that continued after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union in 1989? Does Vladimir Putin still use disinformation in 2014? It certainly seems to be the case. As we look at what comes to us today, uh, a lot of times... Uh, it, if you look at the pictures, you look at the images, you understand that there is false information that's coming from Moscow. Vladimir Putin was a KGB guy. Uh, he rose to power with, with uh, he, he, was, he was an understudy, basically, in the Soviet Union, but he came to power with Russia, and he's put former KGB people all around him uh, in the modern Russia today, and they have the same mindset that existed in the Soviet Union. Same kind of information comes at us, misinformation comes at us, and there's every reason to believe that a fair amount of disinformation comes to us. Well, give me an example of, I mean, I, I want to distinguish, and I, I, I try and do this all the time on my show, to distinguish between a conspiracy theory and a fact of a conspiracy. I mean, I often say, well, could we draw lines between certain dots? I want to believe I can, but I don't have proof of it. But sometimes we actually uncover people conspiring to mislead us. Uh, when the Berlin Wall fell, a lot of those facts came to light. Can, can you give our viewers an example of something that may have been called a conspiracy theory during the Cold War, but after the fall of the Berlin Wall, it was proved that the Soviets were orchestrating it to fool us or to trick us or to mislead us? Well, certainly the funding of a whole lot of protests of the Vietnam War. We now know from released documents that they were sending money to support student protest, to support uh, publications against the uh, uh, United States involvement in the Vietnam War. Uh, so one of the really interesting things that we go into in our book relates to we trace funding from Moscow to authors who wrote books claiming that the United States government, specifically the CIA, was involved in the assassination of President Kennedy. Uh, that was a conspiracy theory, right? That was mm -hmm. the thing. Uh, you know, w were, were they really behind this? Well, yeah, they were funding the speakers, the books, the lectures that claimed that the CIA killed the American president. So, well, I mean, and I, I know why, because the man who actually did kill him, Lee Harvey Oswald, was an out-and-out -out communist who had actually lived in Russia he, uh, briefly. So that was not just an opportunity for them to discredit the U.S., 
security and intelligence establishment, but it was an important defense they needed to do to, to take the blame away from this assassination, away from the actual communists who did it. I mean, that was a twofer. They didn't get the blame, and they put it on the American security. It's a, it, that's a brilliant move. Give me another example of Soviet psychological warfare against the West. Well, you know, one of the things is how they go against institutions like the church. Now, we focus a fair amount on the Catholic Church because there's a great deal of evidence of infiltration of the Catholic Church, of discrediting uh, the wartime pope, Pope Pius XII, uh, discrediting various bishops that stood up against communism as communism spread into new territories following World War II. Uh, a lot of these, the, even to, to a large extent, the, the whole concept of liberation theology that uh, a lot of people look at and say, well, this just sprung up generically from the people as they brought their Christian values and wanted to apply it to government. No, this was funded. This was planned. This was plotted. And uh, at, 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 to a very large extent, you can trace the roots of these movements back to Moscow. Now, uh, you're saying this and you're a professor. You wrote this with the highest level defector from the Soviet Union, uh, Lieutenant General Pachepa. He was, he was a Romanian. Uh, am I right in that? Or, or I'll, where, where was he based? And what documents or proof yeah, no. did he bring with him? Well, th th that's a fascinating story in and of itself. Uh, Pachepa was the number two guy in Romania under Ceausescu. He was involved, he was the head of their foreign intelligence. His main job had been to steal ideas, to steal from the West, to steal technology. There's the old story that, uh, you know, America would invent something, and then the, uh, two weeks later, Russia would invent it again, and then two weeks later, China would make it cheaper. Uh, but he was a guy who stole ideas and, and helped it be reproduced in the Soviet Union and Soviet satellite nations. When Chichevsko revealed himself to be the butcher that he was, Pachepa finally broke with uh, communism. It, I don't know if he was never a devout communist, but he, he broke with uh, Romania, defected to the United States, spent three years in debriefing with the CIA, revealed how this false front, this, this idea of uh, Ceausescu as a modern communist, someone the West could do business with, was really all part of a fraud. It was really disinformation. Mm. That's... That's what he did. That's what happened. It completely fooled the American leader. President Jimmy Carter was in the Rose Garden in Washington, D.C., praising Ceausescu. My co-author, Mike Pacepo, was standing there saying, I can't believe we fooled the American president this badly. Uh, Professor, we've got was, to wrap it up today. His mission. We've got to wrap up the, up the show today, but I would love to talk with you again. I'd love to go deeper into this book. You, you've introduced the subject of disinformation to us. I hope we can talk again about how disinformation is being used in America today. But I appreciate you bringing this to the show, and it's nice to meet you.